Hello and welcome to Lake Resources. My name is Steve Promnitz, I'm the Managing Director, and I'm going to be talking to you about something fundamentally different in the battery material supply chain that's powering the electrification of the globe. Lake Resources is not involved in mining. We're involved in water treatment, and we're using a well-known technology which has been adapted for lithium uh, development. And this clean technology produces a very, very high purity lithium product. That's what the market needs, and we can produce it at scale. Now, I will be making forward-looking comments, so please, when you have a moment, slide two has a disclaimer, and this presentation is available on our website, website lakeresources.com.au for Australia. This slide basically summarises what we're doing, clean technology. Now, this clean technology is an adaptation of a very well-known water treatment method called ion exchange. You may have seen it on your sink, the Brightex water filter. There's no mining involved. What's happened is we're working with our technology partner, Lilac Solutions in California. They're unlisted. And they have adapted this well-known ion exchange technology to work just for lithium. The beauty is we take just the lithium out of the salty water, return it to its source, it's cost competitive versus traditional processes. Their technology is backed by major investors who've made serious money by backing disruptive technologies, such as the Bill Gates led Breakthrough Energy Fund, MIT's the Engine Fund. It produces a very high purity product. We have now demonstrated at pilot scale that we can produce 99.97%. That's 60 times less impurities than what we call the standard battery grade lithium product. And best of all, it's responsibly sourced, a sustainable product. We have a very small footprint. We return virtually all of the water back to its source. Uh, we use iron exchange, not chemicals. And we have now basically de-risked this and we're on a path to production. So why are we focusing on lithium? The EU recently came out in September and stated just how significant it was to get supply into their battery material supply chain. Otherwise, they won't be electrifying vehicles. They're estimating 18 times more lithium production in the next 10 years. Prior to Tesla's battery day, the leader in this space, Benchmark Mineral Intelligence, suggested five to eight times in the next 10 years. Uh, Tesla basically doubled that. Basically, we need a lot more lithium, but we need high purity lithium. And we know that because the mega factories, the plants that make lithium ion batteries keep growing. Five years ago, there were three. Recently, there were 158. And that beast needs to be fed, but not just any product, high purity product. So what is high purity lithium? 99.97% purity lithium carbonate, which we recently demonstrated uh, from our partner Hazen in Colorado, based on the material coming out of the pilot plant. This means that it has ultra low impurities, as I mentioned, 60 times less than 99.5%. That's important for new batteries because new batteries want to make certain that they can have a consistent product that's high quality that they can rely on going forward. And this is particularly important for a new producer like us. We've demonstrated a very simple flow sheet to produce it, and we believe this is going to be very attractive for the market and very nicely priced. So what we've done is we've pumped the brines from our project, Kachi. It's been processed in a pilot plant module using Lilac's direct lithium extraction process. Then it's been converted into a saleable product, which is lithium carbonate, a white powder. And in the coming months, we're going to be putting that into a battery with the help of Novonics. They're based in Nova Scotia. Novonics is a spin out of Dr. Jeff Dunn's uh, very well-known uh, lab in, uh, in Dalhousie University. And uh, they are at the cutting edge of this sort of technology, and we're very pleased to be working with them. And out of that, we produce a high value product. Low impurities means premium pricing. We've done a pre-feasibility study to demonstrate that this process is cost competitive with traditional methods. And now we're actually going to be producing a premium product, not a technical or an industrial grade, where essentially at the moment in the market, you can barely wash your face, uh, on operating costs. Now, this is a premium product, and we've seen pricing 
that's quite significant, although we have to go through a whole uh, price discovery process with uh, potential offtake partners to determine that. So what is direct extraction? What is this clean technology we're talking about? It's very efficient. It operates in the space of hours, not months or years. It just takes the lithium out. So we produce a high purity product. We've demonstrated a pre-feasibility study using a tier one engineering firm. This is cost competitive, around $4,000, $4,100 a tonne. And most brine producers are somewhere between $3,750 and $4,200 a tonne US. And best of all, environmentally friendly, returns the brine back to its source. So what does that look like graphically? At the moment, imagine a, a hyper-arid basin like uh, Death Valley in California. Underneath that valley are salty waters, a little bit at the surface, but most of it is sitting in the aquifers beneath. In these areas, and where we're based in the lithium triangle, that, uh, that salty water also has a little bit of lithium in it. At the moment, the conventional method is you pump that out, you put it into a, a, uh, an earthen pond, uh, an evaporation pond that's lined with a membrane. The sun evaporates the water away, concentrates the salts, and then you take the lithium out. And there's nothing wrong with that process. You use the power of the sun. Uh, and it was very good when lithium was mainly going into ceramics, glass, and some batteries, plus lubricants. Now, more than half of the lithium goes into batteries and are looking forward more than 85%. What we do is we pump the water out from underneath, but we put in a tank, what we call a module. It's just there for two hours. Inside that module, a little iron exchange beads. They're about the half the size of rice grains. They latch onto the lithium ionically. There's no chemicals involved. Then after two hours, we just release the rest of that water back to its source. Only about 1% of it actually carries the lithium. That's what we extract. And you immediately produce a very highly concentrated lithium product without all the other salts. And then it's processed in the normal way into lithium carbonate. And the footprint of that is quite small. Here's what evaporation ponds look like. They cover 15, 20 square kilometres or an open pit mine. We're talking about two city blocks. And this is a sustainable product. Electric vehicle makers are looking for it. Volkswagen, Daimler, BMW, Tesla, EU is focused on it. And we are going to be one of the only companies that can produce this first with a more sustainable product and high quality that's scalable. So where are we located? The lithium triangle. This is in the north of Chile, north of Argentina. This is where the salt water has lithium as well. All of the five main producers are currently there, and so are we. Our Kachi project, which is 100% owned, has a major resource at the moment, 4.4 million tonnes. We could easily expand that. We showed when we released our resource, it's open at depth, it's open laterally. And with 25 years of production in the pre-feasibility study, we only use 20% of that resource. A large lease holding, 11 times the size of Manhattan Island. But the key thing here, it's not about grade. This is industrial chemistry where low impurities is king. And then, now that we've demonstrated this works at scale, we're going to put it into a battery, a fairly standard 622 battery. And this will demonstrate that not only it works well, but the beauty is, these are third party, independent, respected company Navonics. And so we can use this to negotiate for outcomes as we're talking to downstream partners. We have other projects as well. Our Kalpachari project is right alongside Gang Fung and Lithium Americas. Lithium Americas is listed on the New York Stock Exchange. And we've demonstrated brines here that are exactly the same, or very similar, uh, extended laterally into our leases. And apart from Oro Cobre, and Geng Fung Lithium America's joint venture. We're the only other company in this area with key, well-located projects. So what's our timeline? We're going through the studies at the moment, definitive feasibility study, environmental study. We aim to operate a pilot plant or a demonstration plant uh, on site during next calendar year. And by this date next year, we aim to have all of that together and be well advanced, if not completed with construction finance aiming for 25,000 tonnes per annum production in the year 2023. We're listed on the ASX, but we're also on the OTC, LLKKF, 790 million shares on issue. Look, if we were in North America, that'd have a digit less. Uh, a very moderate market cap of around 
35, 37 million US, 3 million in the bank at the end of um, September. We're financed at the moment for our definitive feasibility study and we continue to deliver on that. And best of all, we've had an uplift but the only other major player in this space that's advanced like we are with the direct extraction is SLL, Standard Lithium, uh, and LAC, as I mentioned before, are up the road from us. So there's still plenty of upside in this stock. We're only trading at about 4% NPV. SLL is 40 or 50% NPV. So there's plenty of opportunity there. So essentially, just in summary, we're focused on clean, high purity lithium. This is almost unique in the market using this clean technology, responsibly sourced. And at the end of the day, this is a 21st century solution to a 21st century demand. I look forward to communicating with you. My email, steve at lakeresources.com.au and all of this information, as I said, is available on our website, lakeresources.com.au. Thank you.